July 2017. <laughs> this is the fish that started it all. There's your winter barramundi, folks. Just a single spark. Ground zero. Yeah, beauty. This fat barramundi came along and ignited something. Off he goes. I didn't know it at the time, but that fish would change my life. This was hour one of day one. Now over 150 episodes later, and close to 5,000 hours invested in creating fishing videos, telling stories, and sharing adventures. This is how it all unfolded. This is the story so far. I'm Mikey Cunningham, and join me for the greatest adventure of my life over the past eight years and still going. So why did I start making fishing videos? To tell you the truth, it wasn't even my idea. It was my wife's idea. We had been living at King Ash Bay for a few years and been running the kitchen there, Groper's Grill. But when that chapter closed, my wife got a job in Borrelula working with mums and kids running a mobile play group. Meanwhile, I was floating around dabbling in projects. I did a few website jobs, did some building projects around the shack at King Ash Bay. And I even ran a drumming program for young men in Borrelula. But something was missing. I do come from a film and TV background. My wife Jazz and I had a multimedia business on the Gold Coast where we made TV commercials, websites, some print media, and even some TV shows. I'd spent years videoing million dollar homes, fast cars, and luxury boats. One day, Jazz saw the bigger picture, as she always does. She suggested, why not start a fishing YouTube channel? We lived on the river, I had the equipment, I had the boat, It was staring me in the face and I hadn't even seen it. The hardest part was being in front of the camera. I'd spent so many years behind the lens and here I was with a camera extended out in my left hand pointed straight at me. (laughs) It's uh... But how did we even end up at King Ash Bay in the first place? To answer that we need to rewind to 2011. Four years before I'd ever created my first fishing video. The uh, GPS says that we are 3,200 kilometres away. It was our first trip to King Ash Bay too. My wife and I had packed up the little Suzuki Vitara, connected the second-hand camper trailer and started driving north. My parents had discovered King Ash Bay on their many travels around Australia and had bought a shack there on the river. Our plan was to drive the 3,000 kilometres to surprise them for a visit. This was in April 2011, and being young and naive, we had no idea that a cyclone had just passed through the region only days earlier, and making many of the roads near impassable. But the little Suzuki was up for the challenge, and we soldiered on. We have driven through 10 kilometres of this. And I believe this is the entrance to King Ash Bay. You know, <laughs> we are inside King Ash Bay Fishing Club. How's it feel? I'm a bit crazy. You're very crazy. We spent a week or so at King Ash Bay with my parents. We fished most days and we took two boats fishing. I jumped in with my dad, Normie, and Jazz jumped in with King Ash Bay local legend, Michelle. I'm in the boat with Normie. And then in a boat over there is Jazzy. Their boat's a little bit bigger and has a big bimini on it, so Jazzy doesn't get sunburned. Day one, and Jazz caught her first ever barramundi. Uh, it touched me. What did you, <laughs> <it touched me. laughs> What'd you catch? A barra and my first fish. Lift him up higher. Jeez. <laughs> it wasn't until the final day of the trip I managed to get my first barramundi too. Jazz's one was bigger, and she still gives me a hard time about it to this day. I was hooked. We both were. The following year we came back. The year after that we decided to make it permanent. Our multimedia business was reeling from the aftermath of the global financial crisis and we just wanted out. By chance my parents had mentioned to us that the fishing club was looking for kitchen operators at Groper's Grill at King Ash Bay. So we spent two days putting together our application and we got the job. We later found out that we were the only people to apply. Yeah, so how many people are we going to serve tonight, Daisy? Apparently 400, but we'll see. Yeah, it could be up to 400. And we're maybe prepared for that many, maybe. Hopefully. 
11 years later and we still live in the Northern Territory. Fast forward to 2017 and I'd uploaded my first 10 videos or so. Oh no, I think I got a stingray. There we go. Sorry about that, mate. How's that for a beautiful fish? And that is what I call dinner. Yo, beauty. People are hungry for content in this remote corner of Australia, and there wasn't much out there for people that are visiting King Ash Bay for the first time. So if anyone typed into Google King Ash Bay or MacArthur River or Pelu Islands, they would eventually stumble across my videos. Oh, yep, yep. Ho, 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 first cast! It's first cast! <laughs> Get that net! Oh, my God! <laughs> it was like they were discovering hidden treasure. People would want to find out as much as possible about the area, so I found out I had an audience with no competition. So I decided to commit a little more time to the project, and NT Fishing Adventures was born. My early fishing videos, well, I look back and cringe. Barramundi fishing in the middle of winter off the riverbank. Well, it's a waste of time, isn't it? Well, I'm here today to prove that wrong. I'm Mikey Cunningham, and this is NT Fishing Adventures. My logo was terrible. I'd been onto some sketchy website and purchased the rights to some horrible music in the background. But most of the time, it was just me, my boat Flanders, and fishing some local creeks and waterways and documenting my adventures. So I'm gonna put it to the test today and see if I can get some fish with the evil bananas on board. It was raw and unpolished, but people seemed to really like it. Oh shit, I'm on two rods. Okay, that's on the motor. motor. It was a weird feeling that me going about my daily business and being myself was something people from all over Australia wanted to watch. Oh man, doing this by yourself is a, oh, I could've got him there. So you turn him, he's gonna turn. He's in the net. My wife sees the world through a different lens. She's the one that worked out that people aren't necessarily coming to watch the fishing. She said, they're coming for the fishing, but they stay for you. The highs, the lows, and all the clumsy, ridiculous stuff in between. They feel like they're on the boat with you. He is a good fish at 64. Man, that is crazy. He stabbed me really good right in the bloody vein. So I guess I am the brand. And that's why later down the track, I stopped using the name NT Fishing Adventures and started Mikey Cunningham Fishing. This is the phone call where life got turned upside down. My mate Ash and I were a hundred kilometers from home on a big fishing adventure. And Ash let me borrow his sat phone and I called my wife Jazz. I'm pregnant. It wasn't unexpected. We'd been trying IVF, so we were definitely hoping this would happen. But hearing those exact words, it changed everything. We sold our riverfront shack at King Ash Bay and moved to Darwin, where we could be closer to the essentials like shops, medical care, and a more normal life. I made plenty of fishing videos while living in Darwin. The LNG carrier Energy Frontier is outward bound to sea. Well, you don't get that at Buddy King Ash Bay. I had some help from friends along the way as well to put me onto some new spots and some great fish. Particularly my mate Azza. He showed me around and we discovered a lot of places around the top end. I thought I'd introduce you to Azza here. Just living it up. It's true. Yo, beauty. But it wasn't the same as down in the Gulf. I loved fishing at King Ash Bay. It all seemed so simple there. I knew the waterways and I liked the smaller tides. The gulf just felt like home and I knew I had to find a way back. There was one video early on that featured my mates Ash and Bullfrog. Bullfrog caught his PB barra on a surface popper and we all lose our minds. <laughs> Those are the videos that I enjoy the most, the ones with my mates. Back in those days, the three of us were inseparable. We would go fishing together and go on quad bike adventures out bush and all kinds of stuff. 
After the birth of our son, Arthur, we went back to the MacArthur River to see our friends and introduce them to our new family member. We made it to Coolinga. <laughs> it's about eight minutes from our house. <laughs> Yay! The highlight of the trip for me was being able to catch a barramundi at one of my favourite spots in front of my son and my friends and capturing it all on camera so hopefully he can look back one day and smile. Oh, <laughs> beauty! Hey, Artie. That's what a barramundi feels like, Artie. Ah. <laughs> you beauty, that's his first barra. Over the next couple of years, I did plenty more trips back to the Mac during breaks and holidays from work. It was just like old times for Ash, Bullfrog and I, and we started introducing some more and more characters along the way, like Young Boy, Mick, Ant, Shredder. So Shredder, how did you get the nickname Ivan? I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the Mad Mullet. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you very much, hey. Give me a scratch, hey. Oh, good boy. Oh, we love the belly rubs, hey. <laughs> Any of my videos that features having fun with my mates always gets a lot more views. Thank you very much. And the wild thing about that is we're not even trying hard to put on a show. When the camera's rolling, we act a certain way, and when the camera's off, we are the exact same people. Along the way, our family of three expanded to four with the birth of our daughter, Edith. We had enough of city life. We quit our jobs, we sold our house, and we decided that we're going to travel around Australia. We headed to King Ash Bay as our first destination to try and form a routine and get our bearings. It was a bit of a homecoming to a place where we were familiar with and knew lots of people. The plan was to stay for a couple of weeks and then start heading west towards Western Australia. Nine months later, and we were still at King Ash Bay. This place is like a magnet for me. Whenever I'm not here, I'm always planning my next trip here. We had great fun at King Ash Bay as a family that year. We were able to go fishing together, play with the kids in the sand. I made swings all around the campground. And I continued to keep making the odd fishing video to keep the YouTube channel ticking along. And now we do it. <laughs> Towards the end of the year when the weather had started to heat up, caravan life was getting less fun. So we headed south. Southeast Queensland to be exact. We spent a couple of months visiting different towns, family and old friends. We came up with a plan to buy a house somewhere in southeast Queensland to settle down and get the kids ready for school and start living a more normal life. But where? We visited the Gold Coast where we used to live years ago and nothing has changed there. The traffic on the M1 and at school pickup times is still horrendous, afternoon hailstorms and a fast paced lifestyle. Brisbane is too expensive. We tried Harvey Bay, but even that's getting way too busy now. Nothing felt right. We soon realized there's no place like home. We craved the Northern Territory lifestyle. It was calling us back. The lack of traffic, the laid back lifestyle, things just seem more simple here. So after spending Christmas with family in Southeast Queensland, we headed back to the Territory where we still live now. The kids have started school in Darwin and have made some great friends. After moving back to Darwin, I had two choices. I either needed to go and find a real job or dive in the deep end and take the YouTube thing seriously. One of the last videos I'd published a couple of months earlier was titled Golf Mud Crabbers. Give me over a kilo of that fella. To the customer, how much are they going to pay for that? Ooh, maybe down south, maybe in a restaurant, over 100 bucks easy. This was the tipping point for me. It was an epic one-week adventure with Ash, who had now become a commercial mud crab fisherman and fellow crabber, the Mad Mullet. Oh, we were just doing the Peter Pan thing, you know? The Peter Pan yeah, summer the collection. Boat, you know? Little, 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 <laughs> take the hills together. I documented the entire trip and turned it into an action-packed episode of mud crabbing, fishing, fun, surprises, and even a little bit of drama along the way. This video changed everything. How'd you go today, man? Oh, not too bad. 
<laughs> you gotta be happy with that. That's hell of a day. It was my first fishing video to reach 100,000 views and it inspired me to start taking things seriously. It spawned a new era on my YouTube channel. Bugging man. <laughs> End of the week. Water the crowd. Give him a quick drink. Put him on the airplane. Right. Get him more hydrated. We're going to look after him real good. We've done all the hard work now. So we're going to lose. Give him a quick drink. And then uh, tomorrow they'll be uh, on the truck up to Darwin. I'm almost like a fly-in, fly-out style worker now. I now drive 1,000 kilometres down to the Gulf every couple of weeks to make YouTube videos, then 1,000 kilometres back home. I pretty much do one trip a month. It's a wild lifestyle, but it's working alright for now. Ever since doubling down on YouTube, things have been consistently on the improve. My audience has grown in size and the production quality of my videos was better than ever. People were even starting to recognise me. In Darwin at the supermarket or at the pub, Bunnings is usually good for one or two people to come up and say, hey, I watch you on YouTube. <laughs> it's still so surreal for me. <laughs> Young boy cleaning yeah. up, what have we been doing? <laughs> 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 well, how much you drink today? <laughs> <laughs> it's drink, you don't drink anymore. You drink, I don't drink, drink anymore. You drink too much, look, too much. Look in the bucket. <laughs> at the pub at King Ash Bay is insane some nights. I get to meet so many new people every night. Things like, oh, we've come up from Coffs Harbour after watching your videos, or all my mates in Melbourne love watching you on YouTube, or we'd never heard of King Ash Bay before, but we had to come here from Dolby after watching your videos. I've literally met hundreds, maybe thousands of people this way. It's very humbling, and it's still something I haven't come to terms with yet. I'm just a very normal dude, but people come up to me and ask if they can take a photo with me, or sign their hat, and stuff like that. It's, it's so crazy. I even had a fella in a pokey room at the Beachfront Hotel in Rapid Creek in Darwin. He got me to sign his chest one night. <laughs> but look, realistically, I'm still only a small YouTube channel. I still feel like an absolute idiot when people ask me what I do for a living. But <laughs> yeah, I'm a YouTuber. Last year, my wife and I designed some fishing shirts and I launched them at the end of one of my episodes. Goldies before coldies was the theme of the shirt. I don't consider myself very quick when it comes to humour, but this was one of my rare moments of brilliance. It comes from an episode where the mad mullet asked me if I wanted a beer. I declined the offer because I wanted to reward myself with my first beer of the day after catching my first golden snapper of the day. Goldies before coldies, mate. <laughs> Goldies before coldies. So for me, every time I hear or say goldies before coldies, it puts a smile on my face. It reminds me of a snapshot in time from that day and how much fun me and my mates had. Anyway, as I said earlier, I'm only a small YouTube channel. So launching merch, is my audience big enough? Are we doing the right thing? Are we crazy? Is anyone actually going to buy this? After publishing the video, we went to bed that night. We had five orders. Was this above or below our realistic expectations? I honestly don't know. But it was certainly underwhelming. <laughs> and it looked like we might have invested a lot of time and effort, as well as thousands of dollars, into a big waste of time. But by the following evening, a steady stream of 50 orders had come in. My wife and I looked at each other and sort of said, hey, that's not too bad. This, this actually might work. We might be onto something. And over a year later since then, we've grown and sell shirts, trucker caps, footy shorts to hundreds of people from all over Australia and the world. This is the final chapter. And in this chapter, it completes the story. The story that started 5,000 hours ago with this barramundi. All the blood, the sweat and tears, the years of ups and downs, the triumph and adversity. The final chapter begins on New Year's Eve of 2023. We'd been back in southeast Queensland visiting family and friends for Christmas again. We were in an apartment near the Brisbane River and the kids were enjoying the fireworks exploding in the distance. My phone buzzed. 
I almost ignored it. It was a private message. For a moment, everything around me went quiet. The fireworks, the cheers, the kids. It all faded into the background as I stood there holding my phone, trying to wrap my head around it. It was the pinnacle I'd been chasing for years, the milestone that had seemed to be so far away. And I'll I'll give you the abridged version of the message. It said, I own a boat building company. I'm in the process of designing an absolute weapon of a barra fishing boat, and I'm looking for someone to sponsor. I reckon it would suit you perfectly. (laughs) All right, who's this? Really? This must be a scam. Oh, the factory's in Noosa. So I replied with, well, by chance, I'm in Brisbane at the moment, so what if I come and visit in a couple of days' time? We arrived at the factory and it turns out to be a real person who makes real boats. And this here is what the new Barra boat is going to look like. Fast forward 10 months with multiple video calls and plenty of progress photos along the way. It's finally here. 5,000 hours of persistence. 5,000 hours of support from my wife and family. It was about every early morning spent on the water every late night editing until my eyes burned. It was about the grind, the moments I wanted to quit, and the days when it felt like no one was watching. This is validation. Proof that those 5,000 hours all meant something. But I haven't done this alone. I've needed the help of every person who ever clicked on a video. Every comment, every like and share. You guys have all been part of this journey. You guys helped make this happen. So after 5,000 hours, this isn't the end of Mikey Cunningham fishing. We're just getting started. So here's to the next chapter, because if there's one thing I've learnt on this journey, it's that the fish might be big, but the dreams, they're even bigger. Bigger.